In Southeast Asia, South Vietnamese troops swept into Laos early in February. The drive met with early success, but soon bogged down in heavy fighting. Wu Tant and other world leaders condemned the movement of troops into a neutral country. But the incursion was justified as a legitimate response to the increasing flow of North Vietnamese supplies. With the support of U.S. helicopters, Arvin troops finally took Chiphong, a major supply point of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, 25 miles inside Laos. However, increasing North Vietnamese pressure forced a premature pullback of South Vietnamese troops who took heavy casualties. The U.S. also suffered heavy helicopter losses. The last South Vietnamese troops were out of Laos by March 24th. The U.S. continued to withdraw combat troops from South Vietnam as Arvin forces assumed responsibility near the DMZ and other critical areas. By year's end, the number of U.S. troops in South Vietnam had dropped to 170,000. The South Vietnamese Army has proved that it can hold its own even without the support of U.S. troops. In Saigon, 1971 was the year of an election with only one candidate, incumbent President Nguyen Van Thu. Two other potential candidates, former General Big Min, who had led the coup against Diem, and Vice President Nguyen Cao Ki dropped out, charging that Thu had rigged the election and made meaningful opposition impossible. Despite U.S. Embassy pressure, Ki refused to reconsider, and on election day there was only one candidate, President Thu. The two government reported that 88% of the voters cast their ballots and that President Tu had been re-elected by 93% of those voting. In Cambodia, the military situation worsened. Premier Lan Na suspended parliamentary democracy and called for an all-out effort against the Khmer Rouge and their North Vietnamese allies. Government forces launched an attack to reopen Route 6, north of Phnom Penh but they suffered a major defeat, and at year's end were retreating before the communist armies. South Vietnamese forces crossed into Cambodia in an attempt to divert communist pressure from Phnom Penh, but they too met with little success. In the U.S., the Southeast Asia War left a bitter aftertaste. At Fort Benning, Georgia, Lieutenant William Calley was found guilty of premeditated murder in the slaying of 22 South Vietnamese civilians at My Lai. He was originally sentenced to life at hard labor, and confined to the Fort Benning stockade. But President Nixon, responding to popular outcry, released him to his base apartment and promised to personally review his case. In August, a military review board reduced his sentence to 20 years. The case will be reviewed again, and further reduction seems likely. Another My Lai figure won acquittal. Captain Ernest Medina, Calais commanding officer, was cleared of all charges. Some Vietnam veterans protested the entire U.S. policy in Southeast Asia. In April, they came to Washington to speak with senators, congressmen, and other government officials. Some went to the Pentagon to surrender decorations received for their participation in the war. It was a quiet and effective demonstration. On April 24th, there was another mass protest against the war, again orderly. But on May 3rd, peace radicals calling themselves the May Day Tribe threatened to shut down the nation's capital. They attempted to block traffic circles and bridges using their bodies, trash cans, and disabled cars. Police arrested thousands and herded them off to jails and detention centers. Still, Washington remained open for business as usual. In June, Dr. Daniel Ellsberg, a former Pentagon employee and consultant, released an official Department of Defense History of the Vietnam War to the New York Times. The documents had been labeled secret and had remained in government files since 1968. After publication, Ellsberg was indicted on charges of illegally possessing and illegally copying government papers. At first, the Times reports drew little attention, but when the federal government won an injunction to prevent further publication, other papers printed their own dispatches. The Department of Defense finally released two copies of the study to Congress. After a series of appeals, the Supreme Court ruled that freedom of the press and the prohibition against prior censorship protected the newspaper's rights to publish the Pentagon Papers. Worldwide publication resumed immediately thereafter. In Paris, the Vietnam peace talks went over the 100 mark. The only hopeful sign was that both sides are still talking. At the SALT disarmament talks between the United States and Russia, both sides voiced cautious optimism and announced agreement on a new hotline and a nuclear accident control program. In Berlin, 